Hey everybody, Superfluous Jay here, playing more Kerbal Space Program, and I have made some decisions. Um, I have decided that we really do need some more science in order to uh, effectively, we'll say, um, make our space station. We, we really do need docking ports. Uh, there's just nothing around it. Um, we really also need this... Um, this guy here, which I don't know how we're going to do that. Uh, cause we need, we need, uh, <laughs> we need to upgrade research and development. Um, that's $900,000 and we have not even 200. So, uh, it's not a big deal. We don't really need the hitchhiker. Just, it would be nice. Cause a, it's, uh, it's a, uh, uh gives us uh, the ability to take these contracts and B it gives us the ability to, um, uh, these station contracts here and B it gives us the ability to, to bring a lot of parts up and store a lot of parts in the space station. If we're going to be using it for, um, stuff. <laughs> so I think though, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, uh, give up on the idea of money to, to upgrade mission control. I'm sorry, not mission control, but, um, research and development. And I'm instead going to leave, uh, uh the two boys up on the space station and, um, Go out to Minmus out here and wait for it to be day <laughs> and um, wait for it to be day and uh, this this roof looped around and then um, hop around and do some biome hopping. I think that's a that's a very good way to um, to get our space program some uh, much needed much needed uh, funds. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to loop around until uh, we have a decent amount of sunlight on this side. And that's going to probably be about 15 days, which is kind of crazy. Um, it's, uh, it's the longest we've gone so far in this space program without our, uh, th this is probably fine. As long as, as long as it's daytime here, let's go ahead and make sure he, he's at least in the sun. There we go. And what we're going to do here is we're going to find out what this biome is. We're going to drop a, uh, we're going to drop a, uh, maneuver node here. I'm sorry, not a maneuver node, a waypoint here. And, uh, then we're going to hop over here, find out what this biome is, etc. until we, uh, until we give up. Um, this guy's not going to get a ton of science because he only has two. Oh, let's tell you what, let's fly. Him. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and fly. Him. Uh, he only has two science experiments on him because that's all we had. Um, but he also has, um, like we don't need a lot of the science and Minimus gets you a lot of science and we can revisit these biomes once we get a, a bigger foothold in space here. So um, let's go ahead and uh, let's log this pressure data. Minimus is Highland. So let's just reset this experiment because we don't actually want it. Um, we just wanted to know where we were. So we're going to say this and we're going to say uh, create a waypoint at the vessel location using the terrain and then call it Highlands and we'll apply and save. And now we have a waypoint here that tells us that this is the Highlands uh, and it's a, it's a fairly easy place to land to, to get this. Now this is going to be some kind of flats. I don't know if it's the lesser flats. I don't know if it's the regular old flats, but I do know that it's slightly Northeast. So it's this way. And I think, yeah, I have limited my thrust. So we're going to do that. And we're going to go slightly south of there. That should be good. And what we're looking at here is uh, this is how much fuel we have. This is how much stuff we have. We have 723 meters per second, which is a decent amount, to be honest. Uh, but uh, it's still... Uh, It looks like we're not gonna we're not gonna actually hit that, uh, and I definitely don't want to be in orbit. I want to be in surface mode. Uh, we're not gonna hit that, so I think I'm gonna actually land right here because this is probably gonna, gonna end up being slopes. Nothing wrong with uh, nothing wrong with landing right next to a biome and uh, getting whatever the biome is right next to it. It will be double. We need a two second burn. 
So this should be fine. Just touching the gas here. Okay, and then we can perform all science again. And, we, and obviously, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get all three. You see, thirty science. It's ridiculously good. Um, we probably need more electric charge. Uh, could probably make that a little bit easier to do. Let's go ahead and transmit this. Ten minutes. Let's see what this does. One forty-five. Yeah, it was like half. Ten minutes is half. So two we can transmit. But uh, eight, um, I'd like to be up at 75 before I transmit eight. There we go. So let's go ahead and transmit this as well. And now we have a total of 77 science. So that's what we got from this biome. And this, I didn't even look what it was. It's, is it slopes? It's lowlands. That's even better. So let's reset this experiment. And we're going to mark a waypoint here for a lowlands. Uh, add a waypoint. Use vessel location, lowlands. And save it, and boom, we have two. If we if we group by, yeah, so we've got highlands and lowlands now, which is awesome. Okay, so now we just want to go over here, which is this way and this way a bit. Uh, and I want to go. I, I really like up to be up on my nav wall. Makes it a lot easier to control your ship. So we'll just do this and then hit X. Flip it around. And impact in 22 seconds. Oops, that was too much. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy to waste fuel on Minmus, but there's not much you can do. Other than burn less fuel. Which is really the smart thing. That's what you should be doing. Okay, let's actually pay attention to what we get here. Let's uh, perform all science again. Uh, Minmus is flat, so we're going to be making a... Let's just do it right now while I'm thinking about it. Waypoint, uh, active vessel location, flats. Save it. Boom. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, transmit this one. And transmit the two mitts here. And then fast forward a little bit to get us a decent amount of electric charge and transmit this one. Okay, now we're at a slight problem that we don't have very much fuel left. <laughs> and um, I'm pretty sure this is not just the flats. But I don't know that. It's, it's a pretty big one, and there's great flats and greater flats. So I think this one here is going to be the great flats. Um, the problem is i do not 100% sure we can get there without um, getting out of comms range. Uh, if we land on the near side, like this side right here... Yeah, that'll be totally fine. So we'll aim for this and hopefully be able to get it without uh, too much trouble. We want to go kind of south. Let's see, this is south and this is east. And we want to go a little bit more east than south. So we'll do like that. And we're going to go at a 45 degree angle because that should be about the most uh, good. And I'm going to hit X now. Yeah, we only used 100 meters per second, so hopefully that's good enough. I'm going to give it a little bit more. And then we're going to warp to here. Yeah, see, Minmus rotates fairly quickly, so we're losing some of our <laughs> some of our uh, time here. One thing I don't know is, can we take temperature readings? Uh, no, we cannot. What about uh, barometer readings? No. It's just space near, so it so it doesn't actually give us anything. What about telemetry? No, it's just space near. Okay, so we don't get biomes in space. Um, I think you get temperature in an atmosphere over different places, but I don't know that. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do the full burn, and this is probably gonna be the last the last place we go. 
let's bring it down here. I'm watching the impact time at the bottom there. Okay. Yeah, because we have, what, 64, 64 uh, meters per second. We can't get into orbit. We can barely take off again. So this is definitely our last uh, spot to land here. But let's go ahead and perform all science. This is greater flats. Sweet. Let's go ahead and make a, make a new waypoint. Uh, vessel location. Greater flats. And we're going to save it. Okay, let's go ahead and we have all of our we have all of our uh, electric charge, so we can transmit this, transmit this, and transmit this, and now we definitely have enough science to get our um, docking ports, and then we can uh, then we can start our actual mission of the day, which is to upgrade the Kerbo National Space Station. Let's go ahead and do that now. Oh, and I hope this is turning out okay. I'm uh, I'm I'm trying to do this while I'm encoding video which is never a good idea, but uh, I have limited time with the computer. It's the holidays, and I would like to get as many videos out as possible, so I'm kind of banking on the fact that my computer is beefy enough to encode and record and play Kerbal Space Program all at the same time. So if this looks worse, that's because uh, my faith was in vain. Is this a new symbol? I think it might be, or I never paid attention before. One of those two things. Both are possible. Let's go ahead and build ourselves a ship here. And this is going to be uh, KSS-2. Uh, we'll just call it KSS, Kerbo National Space Station 2. And yes, I do understand that Kerbo National is a terrible name. It doesn't mean make any sense whatsoever. I don't care. I like it. I think it, looks, I think it sounds nice. Um, okay, so what we need here is um, we, want a, we want a science return capsule. We want, we want a way to return science to the space station, or to, to Kerbin from the space station. And the cheapest way to do this, if we sort by mass, um, the external command seat, which really isn't an option, um, the cheapest way is the state Putnik. So if we do the state Putnik and we put a drogue chute on it, I think a drogue chute will be good enough. And then we do one of these uh, experiment return capsules uh, to put the drogue chutes on. Okay, and then uh, maybe even go crazy because this is important data, right, that we're returning here. Let's uh, let's put a heat shield on the bottom. And ideally, that's going to make the center of mass pretty low. Uh, it's low enough, I guess. Um, and then all we need is a way to give this thing a little bit of thrust in a direction. And sadly, we don't have RCS yet. Um, or do we? No, we don't. We don't have RCS yet. But you know what? I totally forgot. Uh, let's go ahead and save and continue. We're going to unlock some things. So let's see if we can unlock RCS jets, because that's that's the, the easiest way to send a, a tiny bit of, of stuff back. And I'm, I do understand that I clicked the wrong, uh, <laughs> the wrong building there. What are you going to do? And uh, so let's exit out and actually go to the correct building, which is R&D. And we're going to go to R&D. We have 175 science. These things cost 30 or 80, depending on what I'm getting. Um, what I want here, these would be nice because these are these are nice because they're uh, little dinky external tanks that that allow you to uh, that allow you to um, slap them on the side of a ship, and your engineer can can do that very easily. Um, struts, we, oh, struts, we already have these. Uh, Let's see. So what did I want here? I wanted docking ports. That's a that's a must have. So we're just going to buy that. Um, and then the next thing I wanted was um, RCS. That's right. So let's see what we can do as far as RCS is concerned. Um, I'm sure it's around here somewhere. I guess I can do RCS. There we go. Really? That is deep in the tech tree. Oh no, okay. 
here it is. This is RCS. So, so it's right here. Flight control, it's very close. And it's got these tiny engines too, which is really nice. So let's go ahead and buy that. And I kind of want these little dinky fuel tanks. Kind of want these little dinky fuel tanks. And we can afford them. And I'm going to do it. Okay, we've spent all of our science. So we have to be able to, uh, to build our space station on what we have. Because we don't have anything more. So this little return vehicle here. What I would like to do is I would like to use literally whatever the exact smallest fuel tank is, which is this minified monopropellant tank. And it is small enough to, to make me happy. So we're just going to put it here right on the top of this guy. And then we're also going to get this place anywhere port and put it. It, it won't go there. That's crazy. It won't go on the heat shield. Kind of makes you want to take the heat shield off. We'll do that, and then we'll make sure he's perfect on there. Can we do this and make sure he's perfect on here? We can. So he is now perfectly centered on the top. That thing is perfectly centered on the bottom. And we should be able to do a decent amount of um, RCS uh, ing <laughs> to get this thing out of orbit. That's the, the whole goal of this is to, is to get him out of orbit. And he's going to need a docking port on him. Uh, like, or not a docking port, a uh, decoupler like this. So if we put this decoupler here, it will stay attached to the craft and it'll come down with it. And then we don't have to worry about it. Um, we could also make this our first construction decoupler, which I think is a good idea. So here's the thing that's going to return science uh, from the station to the thing. And I think I'm going to I'm going to actually uh, make a subassembly of this. Uh, this is returner. This thing is going to be Psi returner. And let's just, uh, oops, let's get rid of it. Because we are going to uh, go back to here and start actually building the space station. So what do we got? What do we got? We don't have much. Um, yeah, we're still kind of stuck with, with what we're doing. I don't think we need to bring up anything major. I think th this first restock mission is going to bring up um, another. Actually, why don't we just do this? I don't every time we go up, we'll bring a return vessel. And then we'll just bring the side returner stuck on top of it. Um, this return vessel, I'm just noticing, doesn't have uh, parachutes on it. And I don't know for a fact if the one in space has parachutes on it either. Um, and you know what? I don't even know if the one in space has docking ports on it. Or not docking ports, um, parachutes or science or anything like that. So let's uh, let's actually load up the Kerber National Space Station and see what it actually has on it here. It has science. Okay, it has all the sciences. Let's uh, delete this ferry. It has all the science on it. It has um, the returner craft has a has a parachute on the top. That's what it is. He has so he does have a parachute on the top. But we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to bring up another parachute to slap on the other one, uh, perhaps a radial one. Um, it also came with this, but this is not detachable. This is this is part of the space station itself. So um, what we want to do is we probably want two docking ports, one on either side. Uh, we want some solar panels and um, we want some batteries. That's that's kind of what we're looking at to uh, to add to this space station. So let's go ahead and go back to uh, KSS two, and well, let's add all that stuff to it. So um, yeah, so what we're going to do here is we're going to add a. I think we're going to add two parachutes, even though we only need one. We're gonna add two, and we're gonna we're gonna take one off and put it on the space station itself, so that uh, so that we have a parachute just sitting up on the space station. Anytime anybody anytime anybody needs a parachute, they can just take it right off the space station. Um, and then so this thing here, uh, let's see, he's got. Let's do this. There's too many too many things here. We'll just put those up there. 
they could actually probably be in the same in the same node. So these two are together, and then that one's together. So this actually should be like this. Um, so 123 meters per second. That's really not very much, uh, but that's fine. Um, he also is going to need two docking ports. So let's go ahead and do this. One of the biggest things in here. Uh, this structural part has an upgrade, not as early structural parts. Probably, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what that is. Okay, so we want two of these. So we'll put them here and here. And I know that's kind of cheating because that's there, but hey, you know what? It's going to come off anyway. And uh, what we could do here is instead of a decoupler here, Yeah, let's uh, let's make this the the center of the thing. If we take this off, and we take this decoupler off. We could put a docking port here instead, and that that seems reasonable. Uh, and then we're also though probably going to want the other two as well. <coughs> because that way that way um, we can dock first. Um, we can we can detach this thing and uh, put the science in it and just send it home and then uh, use this thing to dock to the main space station. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, so, this guy has very little fuel in him, but I think that's going to be fine. I don't think he's actually going to use his fuel because we're going we're gonna to put a fuel tank on here, say, that's probably too much. Let's put just this guy. And the spark engine at the bottom. And honestly, maybe it's even an Oscar. Let's try, let's try an Oscar and see how much fuel that gives us. 258. Eh, not a huge fan. Let's go stupid and do this. Now I can't get to that spark. There we go. 16, 685. That's probably enough fuel. So this here is going to be what ideally gets into space. So let's put this guy on the bottom. Let's put this guy under him. Do uh, this and this. That looks pretty good. Let's make him orange. Gold. That is the least gold gold I've ever seen in my life. So, ooh, I like that. Let's do that one. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that's that. Um, oh, he also needs, I, I didn't even do it. Let's uh, delete the fairing for now. Um, we need tons of solar panels. Um, I'm thinking like eight of them. That's more than eight. I thought I had four. I have six. Okay, there we go. There we go. Eight solar panels, all for the actual space station itself. Um, and then also batteries. And the batteries, I want them to be easy to get to, which means probably putting them on top of this docking port. And maybe even four more. This thing's starting to look uh, a little frankenstein -y, But I think that's okay. It's a resupplier. What do you want? Uh, actually, maybe just two. Maybe just two, and I'll put them up here. Even though that's probably going to block uh, his able ability to get out, he shouldn't need to get out. And actually, I don't think, even think anybody's going to go up with it with this thing. Um, this this might be a robotic probe, which tells me, no, it doesn't need a antenna. It's never going to leave low Kerbal orbit. Okay, this should be enough now. Let's go ahead and build the fairing again. There we go. There it is. And now we just have to get this into orbit, which shouldn't be that hard, even for us. Uh, this is liquid fuel. Uh, I'm sorting by mass. So this is the biggest one. So this is going to be the biggest one of the right size. So let's go ahead and put four of these on here. Uh, let's go back to the old uh, Valiant. We like the Valiant. It's a happy engine. Um, what does this give us? 1588, which is pretty good. Then we want this decoupler. 
and uh, let's try a let's try a solid rocket booster. Oh, we actually don't have any good solid rocket boosters for for this size of a craft. So yeah, we won't bother with that. Uh, what is the uh, what's the stats here? Yeah, this is that's the best the Valiant can do. So I think we actually need another stage. We're gonna go a little standard on this thing. Uh, let's go ahead and make it orange. Why not? Very gaudy rocket, but who cares? Um, let's actually take this whole stage here, toss this aside. If we do this, are we going to be able to lift this with a Reliant? Probably not. We got a swivel. We got the Reliant. Let's go ahead and slap a Reliant on here and just see what it looks like. Um, actually, the TWR is above zero, which is a little surprising. Um, it's not quite enough fuel, although this 664 will, will top us off. Um, also, we have too many parts, which is annoying. Um, we can always strip some of the parts, like we probably don't need these, and uh, we can probably get rid of four of these solar panels, even though I don't want to. Um, that gives us five more parts. That should be enough. Because um, what I would like to do is... That's a little low on the TWR. So I think I would like to take one of these off. Then I would like to slap two of these on. And uh, we've got four more parts so we can do the flea, which is a 36 second burn. And we're just going to put this on. Oh, wait, we can't do that because we don't have cross feed yet. Yeah, I think I think uh, crossfeed comes when you can do resource transfer, which is upgrading the VAB uh, or upgrading the um, what do you call it? Uh, other thing. <laughs> um, I could do this, even though I hate doing this because I think it's ugly. But um, and then auto strut this to grandparent. Uh, auto strut to grandparent. There we go. Um, these together will give us a, a boost off the off the top. Oh wait, uh, all these together plus this guy, and then then kick these aside as we go up to there, and then that's our forty six parts. And then this should be uh, actually yeah, this should go to the root part. This should go. I always do the top the the fuel tank right before the uh, right before the engine. I like to auto strut to the root part, and then that should do it. So KSS2, let's go ahead and save this. Uh, it has everything we would want uh, and anything else we, we can't afford. Um, and let's go ahead and launch this. And we're going to launch it into an 80 uh, kilometer orbit. So we're lower than the space station. And then uh, do, uh, rendezvousing should be no problem from there. And I, I already made it morning. So that should be no problem either. Um, and probably after this, I might upgrade the VAB so we can have more parts. But let's uh, go ahead and hit T. Let's go ahead and go three, two, one, launch. And this guy's going up, up, up into the wild blue yonder. And I have absolutely no control authority, which is something I literally forgot about. Um, I'm going to try to swap the Reliant for a swivel and see how bad that is. Uh, we got 214. The important number, though, is actually here. What's the TWR here? 1.43. So if we take the Reliant off and instead put a swivel on. Now, when uh, this goes, it's 0.39. You're kidding me. Wow, the swivel is ridiculous compared to the Reliant. It's because it, it has upgrades, I guess. I, I, the swivel's not that much worse than the Reliant generally. Um, I guess it's the sea level thrust. That's what it is. That's what it is. So we just can't do it. Um, let's go ahead and save this. Let's leave. Let's see what the uh, VAB upgrade is going to cost us. Because I would definitely like to build with more parts.
450,000. So that's not going to really be in the cards until we complete a couple more contracts. So there's that. Um, what's the other option? The other option is we have one more part. Oh, wait, we don't have one more part available to us. We, we basically need an engine that can, that can get us up. So we also have the Kodiak. which costs a lot more, but is a better engine. All around better engine, actually. Much better engine. We can take these off and do this. And then we've got seven. This is about two grand. This will get us into orbit. Uh, no problem, actually. If anything, our, our TBR is too high. Um, which makes me think this Valiant stage might be a little unnecessary. Actually, if we take these off, it's a little low, but I think we can get away with that. One, two, yeah, I mean, this is almost three grand. And then that gives us four more parts. These guys have gimbling. They don't have gimbling. Well, I'm glad I looked at that because uh, that gives us four more parts, which is the exact right number of parts to have my favorite Elevon 4. Right there, doing its thing. Okay, let's go ahead and launch KSS2 again now with the Kodiak. I don't use the Kodiak a lot. I, I kind of like it. It's it, it could definitely use gimbling, <laughs> but uh, it's it's definitely good as a uh, as a reliant upgrade at least for now on the in this pack that I'm doing where uh, where we don't have um, where we don't have a lot of options as far as gimbling is concerned early on in the tech tree. Uh, we are chewing through a little bit more fuel than I was expecting on the launch. I, I will, ex will admit I thought our TWR was going to be a little bit higher. I was Maybe I was looking at vacuum. But that should be fine. <clears throat> we have a bit of leeway with the amount of fuel we're, we're, we're using here. We're, we ideally are going to show up with a little bit more fuel than, uh, than we have, uh, than we need. But we'll find out. Um, mostly now just uh, riding the... Um, Writing this up here. Um, yeah, I'd like to be as equatorial as possible just because that's where the space station is. And if I remember correctly, I actually did a pretty good job of uh, keeping the space station equatorial on launch. And even if I didn't, I don't know where I'm off. So if I'm equatorial, I'm off all directions. If I'm not equatorial, I have no idea where I'll be off. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this Kodiak. Uh, we got telemetry over Kerbal's, Kerbin's water, which is not bad at all. I don't know why we have that. Seems like something we would have probably picked up by now. But uh, yeah, so far this this launch is very nominal. There's there's absolutely nothing to uh, nothing to complain about. Now, I am going to have to be cognizant of the fact that, uh, as usual, we're going to lose um, comms over the ocean here. So, ideally, my, uh, my trajectory is going to be pretty shallow. And uh, to the point where, to the point where uh, uh, maybe even when I lose comms, I'll still be out of in the atmosphere, I should say. Um, because I, I need my, my apoapsis to be fairly low. So ideally, ideally, I'm gonna have my I'm gonna have my uh, apoapsis be at 80 somewhere around here, just so that so that we're over Harvester's Massive uh, Calm Station when uh, when the time comes. So I'm gonna keep this pretty low. I'm gonna I'm gonna set it on prograde right now, and uh, we'll see what we'll see what happens. If all else fails, I think I could make a maneuver node, uh, so that way I know which direction to aim. That's probably that's probably a smarter 
path than uh, burning really low here and heating up my <laughs> my uh, fairing too much. So we'll just do this. I think we're doing pretty good though. Really not complaining. Our uh, time to orbit, or our time to uh, apoapsis is, is going up, and it's it's at about a minute, which is where I like it to be. So I think we'll be fine. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let it go until our apoapsis gets to 80. <coughs> oh, 83. Oops. Okay, and uh, it should be high enough here that it's going to uh, reach Harvester's Massive, but I'm still going to, uh, before Kerbal Space Center gets out of the thing. See, this is really, I really can't do this. Because that's, that's chewing our, our, it makes us really um, un-aerodynamic. So I'm going to wait till it's looking like it's on the horizon here. Okay, now I'm getting scared. So now we're all, we're also up higher. So uh, what is our electric charge looking like? We have tons of batteries, so we should be fine. Um, but actually, do we not have any reaction wheels at all? Did I did I manage to not bring any reaction wheels? I think I might have. It's weird because it felt like I was able to do it before, but oh well. Oh, now we're out of comms range, so it doesn't really matter. So I missed my window. We'll see if that uh, comes back and bites me <laughs> here when we when we reach uh, out of the atmosphere. We got more telemetry, which is nice. We apparently have never flown uh, high over Kerbin shores. So there's 70. Okay, so let's go ahead and ditch the fairings. That gives us, uh, yeah, we can do things like that. We just can't aim at stuff, which is annoying. So now we just have to hope that we get over Cur uh, Harvester's Massive before we uh, have any trouble. And we are, so there we go. And we definitely don't have any reaction wheels, which is going to make this, oh, no, we do have reaction wheels. It's just really low, so that's that's no big deal. So uh, we have passed our apoapsis. So we're going to do that so we're not past it anymore. And then basic, basically, basically now it is getting this thing like this. And I don't actually want this because this really makes everything harder. Yeah, we don't have resource transfer. So I'm going to aim back front and I'm going to kick this off and hopefully it'll it'll get kicked back half a kilometer. <laughs> <laughs> on the periapsis here. Let's see if that actually works. I hate to just, I hate to toss fuel, but we were too uh, activated. That'll also kick it back a little bit. Okay. So 81 by 78 should be fine. Okay, where is our space station? It's right here. We need to uh, change it to a space station. Uh, symbol. Uh, we're we're behind it, which is good. That means uh, that means we're going to uh, we're going to be slowly catching up to it. I would like to catch up to it when we do catch up to it around here somewhere. So I'm going to put my maneuver node here. No, I'm not. I'm going to wait until we're over Nye Island. I've learned all the uh, all the names of places uh, because yeah, if you see here, it says we're, we're talking to Nye Island. Um, I, I assume that's Bill Nye, the science guy, but I don't know that for a fact. Um, but uh, I've put a I've put a Kerbal Space Center at every at every uh, one of those places so that we could uh, we can launch from Nye Island now or uh, near Harvester's Massive. Um, and I'll probably be doing that in the future, but just not yet. Okay, so here's where we're going to meet if uh, we do the burn here. And the space station is going to be here, which is terrible. So let's go ahead and go forward some orbits here. Um, go into here, and then this button here goes plus orbits. And that's terrible because we can't see. There it is. So let's go plus orbits. That'll bring the space station back to us right about there. 
looks pretty good. And if we go this way, we're getting closer. Now we're getting farther because we have to burn up higher. I'll never understand how this works. Let's try going another orbit. There we go. It's all in the just tweak it. Okay, this is looking better. What are you telling me? Um, there we go. We are... Oh, I see what it's telling me. It was telling me about gap lapses and stuff. Okay, that's 5.2 kilometers. Let's go ahead and slow down. Or actually, let's change the direction. 6.1, so let's go backwards instead. 4.4, 3.6, 2.5, 2, okay, so 2.4 is the best we can do. And the rest is probably because we are off by a tiny bit. We're at the descending node, so if we burn up a little bit, we might get lucky here. 2.4, no, it's not helping. We can get our ascending node to zero, so I think I'm going to do that. Uh, what if we burn negative or positive a little bit? Negative, we're at 2.4. 4.7 is bad. 3.3 is bad. What if we uh, go a little bit lower? 2.3, 2. Yeah, 2.2 is the best we can do with that. So I think that's probably, if we change the time, 2.0. 1.9. Eh, there we go. Oh. 1.7, 1.6, 1.5. I would like to get within a kilometer. But it might not happen. 1.4. Yeah, I think we'll I think we'll live with that. We will live with that. And it's nighttime. And we've got uh three hours before we're gonna do the burn. So let's go ahead and get this guy in the sun just so he uh doesn't lose his solar power. And let's get, oh, he doesn't have, he also needs <laughs> comms, which I think because he uh, hibernates in warp, we're actually going to turn that off. There we go. Now we have comms. So he can uh, rotate and aim at the maneuver node so that when the time comes, he'll be aimed at it. Is the idea. Uh, <coughs> And F5, let's go ahead and warp to that, because I knew that was going to happen. The good thing is we're getting a bunch of more reports and stuff, so that when the time comes, we will... Uh, yeah, we do have comms, that's good. So we can at least rotate around to the thing we wanted to aim at that we spent all that time aiming at before. And we have plenty of battery power to uh, make up for the fact that we don't have any sunlight. There's our target right there. I think I'm going to take this time to get a quick screenshot. And in 30 seconds, we'll make our burn. And kill that. And then 2.4... It feels like we're hitting that local minimum there, so that's fine. Um, Nye Island is right there, so we should have comms throughout this entire encounter, which is nice. Uh, let's go ahead and warp to here. Here we come. We're 1.6. We're heading this way, and the target is this way, so I actually want to... Go like this. That heads us towards it. Now we're going to be 0 0.1 kilometers. I uh, can't aim target retrograde, which is always annoying. <laughs> I'm not used to not having these uh, commands. It used to be like, like we never had these before, and I never had trouble with it. But now it's a huge pain because I don't I don't have it anymore. And we've lost comms. 
even though Nye Island is right there. Hopefully it will rise soon. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. We'll just have to wait for it to rise. Luckily, we're not on a collision course. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now we definitely want a uh, target retrograde because we're going to be very close now. And what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to ideally park this thing right next to it so that we're um, so that we are uh, stationary relative to each other. What a space station. I want to be stationary relative to each other. And then uh, really close to each other. So uh, the target is this way. I don't even see it on the nav ball. There it is. OK, so we're going to do this. Just a little bit of thrust. And then uh, let's actually do this. I think this will be what I want to do. Yeah. I'm going to spin this guy around, and then he's going to come to a stop on the other side. And then we're just going to kind of make a T here. And then Bill is going to get to work. Bill, EVA is disabled. Activate a hatch. I don't know what that means. Oh, that's right. We need to transfer him because they're in here. Okay, Bill, right? <laughs> yes. Transfer Bill into here. Then he can go EVA. There we go. So Bill now is going to come over here. Uh, he's going to, oh, jeez, T, there we go. Yeah, see, it works in, it works in EVA mode. Uh, he is going to, uh, hit the letter I. He's going to take this and hopefully put it in his inventory. No, he's not. Wow, that was easy. Oh, he uses laser. Okay, take it back, though, because you want it over here. And we want it... That's good enough for now. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you are going to come over here and you're going to take every single experiment out of this thing, assuming there are experiments in it. There aren't. Okay. Uh, take all the data out of here. There we go. And then we're going to put it all in here. So this ship has all the experiments is the idea. And then now get actually, yeah, you could you can stay here, right like this. Okay, then we don't care about this ship. We care about this ship. Now I don't know if this is going to work or not. It would really suck if this all ended up in here. But we want to actually we want to turn off for science for the moment because we want to collect all data. Uh, collect all. Then we want to undock this guy. And wow, that was a lot. Let's go ahead and uh, what's his periapsis is that? He doesn't actually have a uh, thing, which is stupid. He doesn't have reaction wheels. I should have thought of that. But let's go ahead and lower his periapsis, hopefully below 70. Done. Let's get it down to uh, 40 if we can. There we go. And uh, that's it. Let's go ahead and hit the parachutes. Don't know why Spacebar didn't do it, but let's do it like this. And uh, we'll come back to him in a moment because I don't want things to get uh, too far apart from each other. Uh, we're going to uh, set this as our target and Control from here. Go 
I'm gonna lock this and you're gonna rotate around. It's probably dumb trying to do this while, uh, yeah, you know what? I would rather these things roll apart than anything else. Cause like well, he's got five minutes before re-entry. Of course he, he's now gone too far away from everything else. He's got five minutes before re-entry. I think I can do this in uh, five minutes. I'll switch to Bill. Come on, Bill. There we go. Uh, where is Bill compared to everything else? Okay, Bill, get back on the space station before you wander too far away. I am very happy with uh, how easy orbital construction was to do that. Okay, so now you, where is your target? It's up there. Locked mode. Okay, so we need to go up like this. Uh, what? <sighs> you lost your, you lost comms again. <laughs> That's so annoying. Um, and we're over the ocean, so we've got a while before we get comms back. I think we're just going to have to accept that these things are going to wander apart and, uh, Go back to our, um, go back to our probe here and just uh, see if this thing survives reentry. Because I don't know if it's going to survive reentry. But there's only one way to find out, and that's to follow it down. Yeah, Crater Rim has a uh, has a comm station. It's up here. Um, it's one of my favorite ones that of the of the Kerbal Space Centers I've made. Okay, this is, um, looks to be, uh, looks to be stable forwards, which is a, a bad thing. Um, I kind of feel like we're going to lose our, all of our science, which is a bit annoying, but it's a learning experience <laughs> We're we're learning whether or not this works. Uh. Maybe we'll get lucky and the uh, the RCS fuel will, will serve as a heat sink. I guess we'll find out in a minute. A little bit of spin there. Okay, we're starting to see heating. Yeah, this is this is going to go south very quickly. We might get lucky. Uh, can I, uh, control from here, maybe? <laughs> no, I can't. Because what, what I was hoping I could do is, uh, make sure I follow this thing, but I can't. Because if the probe blows up, I'm not sure what's going what's gonna to happen to this. Um, we're below 2,000, though, so we might actually be okay. The closer we get to a thousand, the less heating this thing's going to get. And it did make it. It was, it was very scary, <laughs> but it made it. So now the only question is, will the two drogue shoots be enough? And we'll find that out in a moment. We're still at four times time warp. Oh, one thing, a uh, spread angle. You want the spread angle to be 10 on all your parachutes, by the way. Uh, Cause for some reason they slow you down more. Um, there was a little bit of a talk on the Kerbal Space Program forums about that. Uh, one thing we can do here is this. Oh, wait, he doesn't have comm, so it doesn't matter. But we'll see what these drogue shoots do when they fully deploy. We are landing in the water, which, oh yeah, 10 meters per second will be fine. 10 meters per second, I'll be fine. Probably the whole ship will survive. But yeah, but like spread angle is is 10 on these guys. If you knock it down to, oh, I can't, I can't change it now. I'm glad I was able to change it because 10 is 10 is fine, but it's kind of on the the edge from what I remember. Yeah, I definitely want Bob or Bill to hop over to that other ship 
um, when we go back to him, which is probably going to be next episode because we've been recording for like 50 minutes now. <laughs> um, so when this thing lands and we get all this science back, when I, uh, I'll i go up there next time and actually get those those stations docked together and uh, then we'll we'll uh, we'll go forward from there. But yeah, orbital construction, I'm, uh, I'm a fan. So far, it's been pretty awesome. And looks like we lost the propellant tank, but who cares? Let's get all the science home so we don't collect any more of it up there. <laughs> um, and uh, this should actually be another big hit of science. Nice, 141. We'll definitely take that. So um, next time we are going to uh, we're going to get these two stations docked together, the two ships docked together, so that the space station is a bigger space station. I hope you're looking forward to that. I'm definitely looking forward to it my own self. Uh, if you like this video, please like this video. If you want to see more, please subscribe. I'm Superfluous J, and I will, as always. Talk at you later.